to read it. At any time the owner chose. Used most abundantly in the South, slaves were forced to do jobs on plantations that no one else would do. Since a master owned the slaves, they were not paid. On plantations such as Boone Hall, there were two general ways the slave would work, either the gang or task system. Under the gang system, slaves were divided into three groups based upon their physical capabilities. These groups labored often from dawn to dusk under the supervision of an overseer. Because the fields were planted in successive rotation, once the gang had completed their work on one field, it was time to move to the next one. This underscored the severity of the system. Here in the low country, the task system was used most as either a replacement or a supplement to the gang system. So rather than slaves working in gangs with somebody pushing them, Tasks, depending on the job to be done, were assigned to each slave, and the slave was free to leave when that work was done to the driver's satisfaction. As one planter put it in his overseer's contract, a daily task load is the amount of work the average slave working industriously could accomplish in 10 hours. When slaves completed their task for the day, the rest of the time was theirs, although they still remained the property of their master. Boone Hall used a combination of the two systems, depending on whether they were in the fields or maybe making bricks in the brickyard. 
Workers would spend 12 hours a day in the cotton fields and longer during harvest. Men, women, and children worked with children considered half hands until they were 12 years old. In the winter months, the slaves would make bricks in the brickyard, and Boone Hall's brick and slave labor constructed many buildings in Charleston. It became very commonplace for slaves to be hired out from